Okay, in today's video, what I'm going to do is walk you through an example of a trade setup and a trigger, because there are still plenty of you that don't understand what a setup is and also don't understand what a trigger is. Now, a trigger is essentially price action that tells you that it's worth placing a bet against the zone, and the zones I set up using, you know, the Fibonacci ratios and symmetry and all that good stuff. So I'm just going to go over an example and actually I'll show you what it would have looked like into it before it happened so you get a better idea of what you're supposed to do. So here in the NASDAQ futures, we're looking at the December contract. It was a 10 minute chart and obviously the market had shifted to a bearish pattern of lower lows and lower highs. Now the only time I really do some of these shorter term decisions is in the trading room. So if you're in there, you'll find these setups. Uh, but here, let me grab my arrows. I'll show you where this came from. All right, so this prior rally swing over here was 42 and a quarter points. All right, and then I basically took that and projected that 42 and a quarter points from this low here. And that gave us resistance at the 75 and a quarter area. But what we also ended up having at the same time were other extensions that overlapped. So for example, I had a high to low extended. So there was another level at the 23 area. I had another high to low extended. So there's another area at, or another um, extension at the 23 plus you also had 100% if you measure this prior low to high swing and projected it from the low that also overlapped this general area. So the setup decision was the resistance at 75, 23 to uh, 25 area. And again, you know, that's how it looked when you were trading into it and it was calculated from prior swings. So what you typically do is if you test a zone and it holds, what you want to do is go down to a lower time frame chart for a trigger, okay, so that it gets you close as possible, um, you know, to where your risk definition is. So your risk definition was going to be above this 25 area, right? But this is the resistance, 23 to 25. So let me show you what it would look like if you use a 233 tick chart. So here, here's where you had the initial test. This is on uh, 233 tick chart. So here is that resistance at the uh, 23 area. Now the first signal was essentially when you had both the moving average crossover to the downside, and I use the 834 EMA combo, and it also took out a prior swing low. So when both of those occurred, that was your chance to sell with your initial stop above the zone or above the 25 area. Now it initially did give you a little bit of a breakdown here it ended up coming back to retest, but never took out the original resistance. And what it ended up doing as far as, you know, a result, I know that there were some of you that took this in the trading room. That would have been hard to sit through here though. Um, we did see a decline from the 75, actually it's uh, 22 and three quarters was the actual high, down to the second target so the first target's typically 1272, the second target was 1618. You made two targets on the downside, and that was a decline of 64 and three quarter points. Now I don't expect you to get the exact highs and lows when this happens. But if you do, you know, take a signal and you get involved here and you grab something in the middle, you should definitely be a happy camper because that was a nice move without a ridiculous amount of risk because you would have been triggered relatively close to where the risk was defined, right? Right right over here, pretty much, when you took out that low, and uh, the stop would have been right above here. So that's how you're supposed to use my work, especially if you're looking at um, uh, day trades and futures, and those pretty much only get done in the uh, trading room during the day.